What's up, fam? Dr. O here. And as we sit here and talk about Beyonce's backlash, the Beyonce, the backlash to Beyonce, I should say, for her latest country music songs, because, you know, Daddy Lessons, you know, she put out earlier music. I'm reading this fascinating piece on the grill by David A. Love. And, and he starts off, Black contributions to country music have been completely whitewashed and erased, but Beyonce's latest musical endeavor is forcing America to remember what black people built. It's a powerful article, which I think everybody should read. Uh, the one challenge I have at the end of it is when he says, to remember what black people built, most people walking around never knew. And that's one of the challenges and he talks about in his article and so many other people have been speaking about, you know, what is beautiful about what Beyonce is doing is she's giving an opportunity for those of us who are scholars and, and journalists and, and, and historians and, and music historians as well to shed a light on another part of American history that many people just don't talk about or just don't know about. And that goes into the other part of the title of this of this post right now in terms of why I don't use people of color, right? Well, I'll get to that a little bit later. But when we take it to country music, Time Magazine says, the black influence on country music starts with the banjo, which often conjures the hazy image of a white pastoral South. But the instrument is a descendant of West African lutes made from gourds that were brought to America by slaves and which became a central part of slave music and culture in the South. Soon, the instrument will standardize, appropriated, and spread to white audiences through minstrel and blackface shows, which deeply informed the rise of hillbilly music, a term that would later be rebranded as country music. The blackface performer Emmett Miller's Lovesick Blues, for example, inspired by Hank's, Hank Williams' own rendition of the song, which is still one of the most beloved songs in country history. All right. So again, Emmett Miller's Love Sick Blues inspired Hank Williams' own rendition of the song. And the, and the article goes on and on and on. Why is this important? Because we have to understand that so many aspects of American history have black roots in them. But in the society of banned books, in a society we were never getting enough history as it was, we're getting even less now. And that's why many of us have to argue about the idea of, of black of a black person being able to participate in country. Now, we know Darius Rucker, you know, talked about the fact that some of his own fans said that they would never or, or some fans of country music, I should say, you know, told him straight up that they would never accept, you know, a black country singer. But it's not just country music. We can talk about rock and roll. We can even take it outside the sports. Let's take it to the Kentucky Derby. Right. In this article uh, from NBER, uh, National Bureau of Education Research, says, you know, talks about every single time that when you look at the 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 Preakness, when you look at the Kentucky Derby, they talk about at the first Kentucky Derby in 1875, 13 of 15 jockeys were African-American. Between 1890 and 1899, black jockeys won six derbies, one Preakness Stakes, and three Belmont Stakes. But in the early 1900s, black jockeys disappeared. Jimmy Wingfield was one of the last African Americans, was, was the last African American to win a Triple Crown race in 1902, according to this article. He was one of the last African Americans to ride in a Triple Crown race for almost a century. And so even then, when we talk about Kentucky Derbies and Preakness, how could you see a black face now? This is going back to the late 1800s, early 1900s. But many also look at that as, as, a, as a white sport. And this article goes to talk about how black people were pushed out, how there were violent moves made of them while they were on the track to try to get them from being able to be successful in their races. And how ultimately, many people within the white community started to see more of the financial profit of it and therefore wanted it all to themselves. Country music is no different. And to be quite honest, if we're not careful, we're going to start seeing this story about rap as well. Let's just keep it real. The fact of the matter is, we need to be mindful of this history. We need to speak on it. Country music is as much a black form of music or belongs to black people as it does any other group, if not more. But this goes to our story. But here's the other challenge. And this is why I talked about the other part of this title, why I don't use the term people of color. In my, in my book, Lies About Black People, I have this thing called your racial vocabulary, your racialized vocabulary. And one of the things I stopped, I never used the term minority, I was never down with it. One of the reasons I stopped using the term people of color years ago was because when we use terms like people of color, we take white people as a center and everybody else is colored in. And last time I checked, white is a color. I know it's a color because it's in a box of crayons. I've seen it with my own eyes. So 
why take a group and put them at the center when historically it's not even true, given that black people were the first people on this on this planet? This isn't racist. It's just factual. But when you take terms like people of color, when you take terms like minority, and when you add nonsensical terms like BIPOC and, and the like, you keep coming up with all of these other new terms and white people just get to be white. They keep get to keep looking at themselves as the original, as the center. And when you see yourself as the center, you believe that everything springs from you, which is why many people believe that rock and roll sprung out as a white form of music or why country music it just has to be a white music a form of music because you know white people dominate the industry right now or the Kentucky Derby the list can go on and on and on and that's a problem and so what we have to be mindful of is that whether you love Beyonce songs or hate her songs this is an opportunity for America to learn if we choose to. But with the book bans that we're having, people are banning her songs from different radio stations. Most of the country stations in the beginning weren't playing her music at all when she dropped these two songs. We have to be mindful of the fact that what we are talking about is part of the larger American blacklash to our history and people wanting it to be erased. What is wrong with telling the complete picture of America? What is wrong with telling the complete picture of music? If we believe that music is for everybody and music is the language of spirits, as my man Bomani says, then we should use this as a lesson. But we know in our society that the backlash comes to this idea of fear about the, 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 the browning of America, more of our stories, more of our culture being put into the mainstream, and that angers a lot of people. It doesn't anger most white people that I know, to be quite honest. A lot of them and the people I work with, they embrace it. But on the larger scale, we know that this is now going to become a political issue. It's an election year, of course, and they're going to find more ways to to speak about some of this negativity. I mean, when we already talk about some of the racism that 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 happens, you know, in country music, we can just talk about Morgan Whalen and Jason Aldean. Like, there's a certain type of, uh, you know, when, when uh, Morgan Whalen, you know, was found using the, the N word and everything, you know, his album sell soared. Uh, Jason Aldean, you know, with his song about, you know small town America that he filmed in front of like a courthouse when lynching take, took place shore to the top as well. So I hope that people who are country music fans, I hope that country music fans will stand up and embrace diverse voices within country music. Don't let country music be taken over by racists like the Republican Party has been taken over by racists and extremists and, and white people who build themselves off of white identity politics like Donald Trump. If you really believe that your music's supposed to be healing, if you really, and I say you, anyone who's a country music fan, and it's supposed to be, you know, that inclusive of everybody because of the messages that it brings, then you should embrace Beyonce. And furthermore, you should also learn your history. You should also learn your history. Because again, black history is American history. And we are all better for it when we know it and can speak knowledgeably of it. So Beyonce, Keep holding them down, Texas. Keep doing what you're doing. We appreciate what you're doing. And it, it's not your job to speak out against about the history. It's your job to put it out. And for those of us who do this work, to speak out in support of, of spreading the knowledge. Each one, teach one. That's what we do. I'm Dr. O. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you want to learn about other issues that I'm talking about as it relates to race, culture, and politics, music, hip-hop, anything like that. Subscribe below. And of course, you could always check me out at liesaboutblackpeople.com. Peace.